going on, everybody? So we are live tonight. I'm going to move my camera in just a little bit here. I'm actually going to move, give everyone a second to get it. I'm going to tip this up just a little bit so it doesn't show as much of the... There we go. That's a little bit better. All right, so we'll give everyone a uh, minute to get in there before we start answering questions. Made myself a nice blueberry, strawberry, raspberry um, shake. Gonna put on, I think there's a baseball game on tonight. I don't even know what today is, but. What's going on everyone? What's up Storm? Be more, what's going on? Seven hundred homers is a lot of homers. Hi Takumi, what's up, Matt? You know, I'm sure someone will do it eventually, but what Pujols has done is amazing. So I'm just sipping on a uh, shake. Just made myself a little um, blueberry, raspberry, strawberry, orange juice, banana. Uh, with some TB12 protein. Hi, Shet. What's what's going on? Video game Mac could reset in two years. Hi, Nevin. Hi, Brian. It is pretty good. Not bad for a protein shake. We have any baseball games on tonight? I think we got one on MLB Network. We almost always do. Hey, Matt, your team's hitting 160. Is that what you said? Well, it's a tough, it's a good question. I'd probably have to see your team hit to see what's wrong with them. I always say three things you look at. First thing is timing. Make sure they're in a good hitting position on time to hit. If they're late, you got to get them there earlier. If they're early, you got to get them there later, obviously. Um, and then uh, look at pitch selection. Make sure they're swinging at good pitches. And then you go to mechanics after that. I got a little Yankees Blue Jays here on uh, MLB Network. Could everyone give this video a thumbs up? Let's see if we can get 100 thumbs up right now, 100 likes, if everyone could like like the video. I just saw a question about um, inside out swing. Simple thing to play. Could you explain what it really means? So inside out swing. So I say that your path should work from the inside out. But that doesn't mean that I'm like trying to like push the ball the other way. That just means if I make a tight turn with my hands and I start to turn the barrel back and I work my upper body back, then the barrel should stay tight to my shoulder. And then as I continue to turn my lower half, then I'm inside and I can, I can stay in if I need to, or I can let the barrel out whenever I want to, if the ball isn't in. Yeah, most recruiting doesn't really happen during the high school season, in my opinion, because colleges are playing then, so doesn't really matter what size high school you go to. The biggest thing is um, you should definitely be using video. You need to be proactive. You need to be reaching out to schools. You should have some type of video with your with your highlights or practice video or something. Um, I have a bunch of videos on YouTube that explain how to do that. So go check that out. But you need to be proactive in reaching out to schools. Best BB core bat for 14U. I don't really know because a lot of people ask me back questions. I mean, I don't hit obviously, so I don't know what what is the best bat. I know bats that kids like to use, but um, it was all different types of bats. Some people are better off using an end loader bat, some more a balanced bat. Um, 
Jeez. Bo Bichette just almost broke his knuckles on that pitch right there. Yeah, baseball bat bros do a good job with bat stuff. A lot better than I do. Yeah, if you struggle, um, hey, thanks, Paul. If you struggle with off-speed pitches, then it could be a bunch of things. One, I do think swing mechanics has something to do with it, has a big part to do with it, um, especially as you get older. You know, you've got to have a barrel that stays in the zone for a long time. It gives you the ability to hit, you know, pitches that, aren't the pitch you're looking for. You could also look at maybe it could be approach. Um, you know, if a hitter is trying to pull too much, trying to pull fastballs too much, that's their approach. They're going to struggle on off-speed pitches. So maybe you go to more of like a, you know, if I'm a righty, I'm going to drive the fastball, the right center gap, and I'll be able to still hit the breaking ball. Um, it could just be learning, you know, how to see spin and recognize that stuff. At 11 years old, you don't see it a lot, so you're going to struggle. That's normal. You know, as you get more experience seeing pitches out of the pitcher's hand, you start to recognize pitches better. Um, so there's a bunch of different things that it could be. I do not play golf. I like golf, but... If I were to play something, if I was going to play golf, I'd have to golf all the time because I have to be really good at it and I just don't have enough time to do it. And I'm not going to do it if I'm just going to be average or below average because that just won't, would not be fun for me. Jeez, Bo Bichette just got his knuckles blown off again. Those are like 99 mile an hour bowling ball sinkers right there. That, that, I don't know if you guys are watching this game and gals. But that's one of those balls where, like, if he was, if Bobachet was 10 years old, he'd be going as he ran down the first baseline. What do people do wrong when building arm strength? Well, I'm not really sure. Um, I guess there's a lot of things you could do wrong. I think if you want to throw better, you got to throw a lot. I think a lot of people don't throw enough. Um, but you can't just be stupid about it either. You know, if you look at, there's a lot of velocity programs out there now, building arm strength, building arm speed. Um, I think you got to be smart about it. You can't just come out and just think you're just going to, you know, chuck heavy balls and, um, you know, magically throw harder. I think there's a lot to it. I think that, um, You know, I think you have to work your way up to it first. So, you know, uh, you have to be patient. A lot of people want like the magic bullet. You know, they want to throw 10 miles an hour harder in a week. It's going to take weeks and weeks and months and months for most players to gain velocity. So you have to be consistent, stick with it. Um, we could probably talk about this for a long time. I have a lot of pro guys use steroids in the past. You know, people say a lot like, oh, all the pros are on steroids. I don't know. I haven't played pro ball in a long time. I know when I played, I only knew of a few guys that were on them. Now, were there some players on them that I didn't know? I'm sure. But I just think I'll say this real quick. Actually, let me, um, let me answer this uh, super chat real quick. And then let's talk about steroids for a second. Um, Thank you so much for Super Chat. How do you say it? Abrima, John, I think is how you say it. I'm really bad at pronouncing names, but thank you so much. What's the best way to hit a 95 mile an hour change up? Um, <laughs> so here's the thing. Change ups are tough pitches to hit because um, a lot of times they look like fastballs, right? So like a curveball has a hump kind of coming out of the hand. A breaking or a slider, you'll see a little bit different spin. Change up a lot of times, it looks like a fastball. Really hard to hit. So 
typically in order to hit change ups, first, I do think there is an approach part of it. Like, you know, if someone's throwing 95 change ups, that means they're throwing like probably 103 mile an hour fastballs. So you got to make sure that you're not just like dead red, just spinning off fastballs, or else you won't stay on the change up. Here's Aaron Judge right here. Let's see if he can go deep. That was a 90 mile an hour slider right there. So I think to be able to hit a good change up, you have to have a little bit more typically of a middle of field approach, being able to stay through the ball. Your barrel is going to have to, you're going to have to have a good barrel, bat path. Again, because if you think you're going to hit 103 or 102, but it's 95, but you're able to stay on it long enough because your swing allows you to, that gives you a chance to hit that change up as well. Um, and the last way is just sit on the change up, sit on something slow. You're going to get beat probably by something fast. So that would be like, take the same, as I said before, hit the fastball to right center gap as a righty and probably pull the change up. Now let's talk about, let's talk about, um, let's talk about steroids for a minute. Cause I do think Marco Carrillo, right? A player on our team was talking to me about this and he was like, this was a couple days ago and he was like, dude, you were on steroids. He's like, I saw pictures of you when you played, like you were 215 pounds and you know, low body fat and you were definitely on steroids. And I was like, I swear on everything. Oh, another slider. Like I swear on everything that I never took steroids in my life. So like sometimes people see people like if you saw me when I played, I was 250 pounds, I had really low body fat and ran like 6'5", 6'6", 60. Like, that's pretty good. I was not on steroids. So some people, if you work out a lot and train and that's all you really do, your, your job is to be in the best shape of your life. Doesn't mean every big strong guy is on steroids. A lot of people, you know, I just think people are quick to be like, oh, he's on steroids, he's on steroids. So. Like I said, I only knew of two people in my whole career that were on steroids. There were probably a lot more, or there were more, but some people, I, I hate when people are like, yeah, the whole league's on it. The whole league, I don't believe is on steroids. Thanks, Mar. We had to get a, thank you for the super chat. We had to get a farting question in here. <laughs> or, or a comment, not a question. Damn, he just freaking went slider, 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 slider. I didn't watch that every pitch that at bat, but he was painting those sliders like that's like that's painted right there. Almost a 90 mile an hour slider. Like, look at that pitch. That is freaking beautiful. 90 mile an hour sliders. I was going to say that's why I'm sitting on the sofa, but people didn't throw 90 mile. Actually, Ubaldo Jimenez was one guy that threw super hard off speed pitches, but now it's like everyone does. My thoughts on the Patriots. Um, my pocket radar reads one mile an hour slower than Stalker, sometimes two, but that's just my pocket radar for some reason. My thoughts on the Patriots real quick, since not everyone here is a Patriots fan, is that kind of what I thought coming into the year. I think the Patriots are fine. I think they're a decent team that will always be pretty well coached, even though people talk a lot about how the coaching is a mess because they don't have a true offensive coordinator. Bill Belichick and the team is always going to be pretty well coached. I think well enough coached to win games. I just don't think that they are going to win. They can't win anything with the team that they have. Like I just don't think you can't compete, especially offensively. You, you're never going to be able to keep up with Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen and Lamar Jackson and I know Justin Her I know the Chargers and Herbert's hurt, banged up in the Chargers, but like I just don't think that offense is gonna be able to keep up with those teams. So I just think they're gonna be a, your average decent team. And I think they need I think they need a superstar on offense. I just think they need like a stud. They need a number one, like a real, real dude on offense. And everyone does. I mean, look at the Dolphins. They got, they drafted Waddle and they signed Tyreek Hill. They traded for Tyreek Hill. And now they got two dudes. And it's going to be really hard to stop that offense. 
Baltimore has Lamar Jackson. They got a dude. Really hard to stop that. Like, the Bucks have lots of dudes with Evans and Godwin, and then they go get Julio Jones, and they got Brady. Like, Patriots have a bunch of, like, around to play college where the recruiting business like bachelor parties. Um, that's a good question. So I only went on two official visits. I visited more schools than just two, but I went on two official. And by official, I mean, um, one, the school, they fly you down, they pay for your flight and everything. And then you stay with the team. So you stay with players on the team. Uh, you sleep, you know, you sleep at wherever, in their dorm or wherever. Uh, so I'll tell you mine real quick. When I went to UNC, I went to two official visits, UNC Chapel Hill and Wake Forest. When I went to UNC Chapel Hill, it was the worst visit ever. I literally kind of didn't want to choose a school after I left because I hated the visit so much. I didn't like the school very much. Um, some people love their campus. I like Wake Forest campus more because it was a smaller campus. But this guy's nasty. Now he's blowing 95 mile an hour fastballs by people. Um, so... UNC, the, the two kids that I roomed with or I stayed with, they had like a test the next day. So they just studied the whole night and I just sat on their futon and like watched TV by myself and they just studied on their computers. And then I went to sleep, I woke up and that was the end of, I never met the team or anything. It was a horrendous visit. Like that, it was a bad job by them. You know, maybe they didn't want me to go there. I don't know, but it was just a bad job. Uh, I don't. I couldn't even tell you who I who I had as uh, that not tour guide. So I don't even know what you call them, but who hosted me? When I went to Wake Forest, much better job. Uh, they brought me to what is called the baseball house, uh, which is basically where the baseball team hangs out. And you said, is it like a bachelor party? I, I wouldn't say it's a bachelor party. It's just like your normal, it's your co normal college, you know, atmosphere. So they at least brought me like to the, t I saw the, I met the team, like the whole team was at the house. I went and hung out with the team. I really liked the team. And there's one, in the, one thing that swayed me that way is I, I knew that I liked the players on the team. So they did a much better job than UNC did when it came to recruiting. Thank you, Ubaldo. Um, love your stuff. Have you ever heard of teacher man hitting? If so, do you agree with what he teaches? Yeah, a lot of people ask me this. So um, I have heard of them. I've heard of, excuse me, I've heard of most people online. Um, a lot of people send me different coaches, uh, you know, clips and stuff like that online. And so um, I have heard of them. I've seen some of his videos. I've never met him, never worked with them before. Um, I learned, so you guys might not have seen all my videos over the years. I learned most of my hitting at first from a, a guy named Sean Wooten, who was my teammate and then became a major league hitting coach, minor league hitting coach. Uh, so I learned a lot of stuff from him. Actually, some of the stuff that he talks about, what I've seen from um, Teacher Man, some of it is similar. Some of it is uh, is different. So I view, I a lot of my philosophy started off with stuff I learned from Sean. And then, you know, I've coached kids now for nine years about. So I've learned a lot of new stuff that I've added. And, you know, I, I try to take things that I see from other people, whether that's on social media, whether that's, talking to hitters, whether that's, you know, being in a facility and, and, um, you know, just talking through things with other coaches at the facility. So it's just a blend of all of that. Man, my back is sore. Roger Clemens predicts home run 61 will be hit off a breaking ball. What is your opinion and why? Um, 
So Judge, uh, I don't know Judge's stats. I think this year he's hitting breaking balls a lot better than he has in the past. Clearly, a lot of pitchers are going to throw him breaking balls. He just got about 400 sliders in that last at bat. So maybe that's why. Uh, when's the new facility opening? Great question. We're still waiting to get Clarence to go in there. Great for some reason right now. I'm not sure why. Hey, hi, Matt. Do you think we get to the point where Power 5 D1 coaches only pull from the transfer portal instead of guessing on high schoolers? I mean, maybe. Um, you know, I think when you're when you're taking a kid from when you're taking a college kid, you know that they've, well, f first, a lot of them have stats. So you know how they can do against the type of competition you're face. A lot of work is guessing in, in, uh, for high school guys. Um, at the same time, there's still a lot of good high school guys. So I don't think it's ever going to be just taking all transfers. You can't do that. People are going to have to take high school guys. I just think that the you know surefire, like guys that are definitely studs are going to, are going to, sign with power five schools and it's going to be i think it's as you kind of go down the tiers players are gonna um you know if, if there's question marks about a player those players are probably going to get passed over so but you got to take you know you got to take some high school guys you can't just take transfers i think the thing that stinks is that If you take a kid, like I think of it from a college coach, coach's perspective, like if I take a high school kid, let's just say me, right? Let's say Wake Forest took me like they did. They recruited me and I go to Wake Forest and let's say I do awesome and I'm a freshman All-American and, you know, everyone's like, wow, this guy is really good. He's going to be a, like a first round pick and a major league player one day. In today's world, like now, like that player is then like, playing at Wake Forest and then the next year they're playing at Vandy or not, maybe not Vandy, but the next year playing at LSU, you know? And it's just like, I can't imagine as a college, you go through so much work recruiting guys and to finally get that player and be like, yes, we got him. And then one year later they, you know, they do awesome. And then they just bounce and go to like a, a even bigger school. So, um, I think college right now is really strange with how recruiting is going, how transfer is going. It's just, it's in a weird place. My son's coach keeps telling him to turn behind the ball. Are you familiar with that line? Turn behind the ball. So turn behind the ball. What I'm assuming is he's, maybe he's sliding. So like when I turn, when I turn to hit my lower body, my back leg starts to turn. My upper body starts to work back. Like turning behind the ball would be this. Watch my head right here. Ready? See how I didn't go forward? So he might have a slide, like he may have a slide with his lower body instead of a turn. His upper body might be getting out in front of his lower body. Um, you know, he, there's a couple different things he can do. He's not controlling his weight very good. He can be falling forward into his front side and shifting into the front leg too early. So when you tell someone to get behind the ball, turn behind the ball, it just means like you want them to rotate back behind the ball with their body and not move or shift forward. This is just crazy. Like watching these two guys throw, you got one guy throwing 100 mile an hour sinkers. You got one guy throwing 90 mile an hour sliders and 95 mile an hour four seamers are just taking off. It's like, these guys are crazy. Uh, I think I have another super chat. Did I get another super chat somewhere in here? There it is. Uh, Blake Brown, thank you so much for the super chat. Stud shortstop at receiving. Few too many errors in the throw. How can we fix? Okay. it's um, a good question. The first thing is I always I probably have to see. I have to see what, uh, what it looks like. Um, I would say most errors are made on throws anyway. A lot of guys... There's more throwing errors than fielding errors. Sometimes throwing errors are are fielding related, but it's excuse me, it's tough to say why. Like it could he could just have a horrible arm action, and um, you know it, it doesn't allow him to repeat 
um, his throws or repeat his slot, repeat his release point, those type of things. Nice little pick right there. Who is that, Torres? Um, so that could be it. Uh, sometimes bad throws are, are poor footwork, not getting the body in position to throw consistently. So like, I don't really know uh, exactly what it is, unfortunately, without really seeing them. But those are things that I kind of look for. You know, does his feet work and put him in position? Everything's really about like getting your body, just like hitting is getting into, so if a good hitting position is getting here on time to throw, like a good throwing position is basically doing the same thing, like getting my body in position to throw and repeat, repeat this over and over and over again. The more I can repeat this, my arm stroke, my release point, then the more consistent my throws will be. Any tips for a high school freshman ball player? So no different tips than, you know, anyone else, I don't think. Um, my whole channel is tips, so you can, you can go through the whole channel and watch um, our hitting playlist and fielding playlist. Pick your position. I have every position on there. How can the Yankee get away with the no long hair pull? What is the Players Association or the, the um, your Players Union say about it? I don't think they say anything about it. I played with the Yankees, and first thing I had to do was shave. I told you guys this story. You might be new to the channel. Uh, first day I walked into the clubhouse, uh, our assistant coach uh, told me to go shave my effing face. That's how I was introduced. I came in, I said, hey, you guys, how you doing? I'm Matt Antonelli. And he said, go shave your effing face. And I said, uh, yes, uh, coach. <laughs> I turned around and went to the bathroom and got a razor and shaved my face because this is what my face probably looked like when I walked in there. I might have been a little shorter. I probably shaved a little shorter, but I never, I never shave with a real razor. I only like trim my beard. Hey, Michael Allen, thank you so much for the super chat. Matt, do you believe you triple A select ball is the way to go for youth players? Um, so to be honest, at U triple SA select ball, like up here, we play, our young players play in a league called uh, uh, MB Select, so New Balance Select League. Um, and for tournaments, we play in all different types of tournaments. So I'm not super familiar with exactly what U triple SA ball looks like. Um, you know, what we try to do with our young players, and sorry, I'm trying to get, my back is killing me. Um, sorry about that, I lost you again there. Uh, what we try to do for our players is like, I want our players to play with them against the best players they can play. So while being um, entry to, at, you know, 10, 11, 12 years old in our area to play. So like last year, my 11 year old team, like we played in a lot of really, really good games. I don't, we very rarely blew any teams out and um, we didn't get blown out a whole lot. We got blown out one game. The one game we got blown out was actually in a tournament that there were no bat regulations and we used USA bats and the other team used USSA bats and they were actually smashing ball. Like every ball they swung at was hit. Like I, I never believed that there was that big of a difference in bats, but there was. And then we played the team the next weekend, uh, both teams using USSA bats and we won uh, both games, I believe. So it was a totally different game. Uh, best way to break in a glove for me is um, I like to, one, play a lot of catch with it, two, use a mallet. So I have a glove mallet that I just just beat the crap out of it. Uh, I don't know where it is right now. It's in the other room, actually. Um, but I just use both of those methods. Nothing crazy. Joe Schmo. Real home run record, Bonds or Maris? <laughs> well, I guess Bonds, yeah, has the actual record, but um, I know Bonds was, was pretty juiced up, but yeah, I'm watching the Yankees-Blue Jays game right now, so I'm watching along with many of you. 
How annoying is Pat McAfee? So I, I see some of Pat McAfee stuff, but I'm not like an avid watcher. Or I'm not even close to an avid watcher, but like, I don't know, sometimes on YouTube, it'll randomly pop up and I'll watch, their vi watch his videos. He doesn't annoy me a ton, but I don't watch a lot of his stuff. Slugger's Fury. Yeah, we, we've played Slugger's Fury. Um, our Antelope baseball teams have played against you guys in the past. My 11-year-olds two years ago played you guys actually like three or four times during the season. We, pl we, pl we played in one tournament against you guys, actually in a championship game, a tournament. Um, that was the best we played against you guys. We ended up mercying you, but you guys were really good. And then we played a doubleheader in the regular season, and we split. Um, oh, no, we tied, and then we tied a game, and then I think we lost a game. And then we played you guys in the championship game of the regular season championship and ended up winning in like a super close game. So we played four games that year against you guys, but it was a really good program, good team. Uh, I'm not watching Monday Night Football tonight because uh, I have no interest in watching the Giants and the Cowboys. If that's who's, who's playing tonight, I have no interest in watching that game. I'm still mad that the Red Sox, the Red Sox, <laughs> I'm still mad that the Patriots lost yesterday, so. Uh, am I planning on heading south towards Dartmouth? I was in Dartmouth this summer, but not anytime soon. Two oh eighty six mile an hour slider on the black. It's a good pitch. Uh, thoughts on using a really... Yeah, Mac did get hurt. Thoughts on using a really heavy bat in practice. So some hitters like to do that. I, I would make sure you're not going too heavy where, uh, you know, changing your mechanics around. I also think that, you know, they've done a lot of studies that it, it's not just about swinging something heavy, but also mixing in something a little bit light that you can swing faster. Uh, so we do do that during our training. We do heavy bat, we do light bat, we do regular bat. Hey, thanks, uh, Marcel. Is that how you say it? I appreciate you watching our videos. Uh, if someone traveled to me, would I be available for a week long hitting boot camp? So people travel all the time. Um, I haven't done lessons over the last month. I haven't done lessons for a while because our facility has been delayed opening up and I was coaching a ton and traveling a ton. I've had players travel in. I don't think I've ever had someone come in for a week. Because uh, once I get going, I get like really busy. Um, but I've had players come in for, uh, for a couple of days. A week is probably excessive. We can probably get it done. Most players that come in at Fyan come in for, for two, three days, usually max. I don't know if I've ever had anyone come in for four days before. Hey, thanks. Dr. Blue. Yeah, so I used to be uh, I used to be a huge fantasy football fan, and then I when COVID hit, I I didn't do fantasy that year because I just was like, I'm not playing fantasy and having, you know, taking whoever uh, Alvin Kamara and then having. Kamara get COVID in the championship game and it blow my season because of COVID. So I, I didn't do it that year. And then, and then I just haven't gotten back into it since then. Uh, never had a bad experience traveling the big, no, nope. never thought about playing cricket. <laughs> how much you charge for monthly payment for football team? Depends how old, uh, depends how old you are, but I would say most, most of the monthly payments I think are between uh, 300 and 350, something like that. But we don't charge year round. You don't pay, you don't pay every month of the year. You just, we typically start paying, I think in September and finish before the season even starts. So yeah, if you want to work out, um, <laughs> right now I have a wait list of about 4,000 people because I haven't done any lessons. Once the facility gets open, though, I'll get rocking and rolling again. So if you want to shoot me an email, that's the best way to probably set something up. Just shoot it to me at matt at, matt at antonellibaseball.com, and I'll get back to you. 
I'm not sure when I'll start up. Again, we're trying to get in the facility. And once we do get in there, um, you know, I'll go, uh, during the winter, I go like seven days a week. I probably, I won't be doing that in the fall, but I will be doing lessons. Uh, chop sake. Do I ever stop and make me animate to the big leagues? Not really. I don't think I've ever really thought about that. Uh, who's the most, who's the most badass hitter you've ever seen? <laughs> um, Manny Ramirez. When I played Manny Ramirez, the guy hit everything. I feel like he got a hit every at bat, and I feel like he had a home run every at bat. Uh, I've, I've heard many Neil Diamond songs at Fenway. Can't say I've ever belted out the song, though. Um, I just made a video, actually, Jerome. I made a video on practice versus game. If you, you're on our YouTube channel, if you just go over to our videos, I talk a little bit about it. That's not saying that what I say in the video is, you know, what's going on with your son. I don't know. Cause I don't, I, I'm not, I haven't seen him hit, but you can check that out. I give some of my thoughts in there. Yep, that's true, Andrew. I went to I went to hand Manny his helmet. And he ignored me. Yeah, I know about recruiting services. I think there's, I think there's. Uh, let's say this. I think if you have um, personal attention, where someone is going to take you and evaluate you, and and tell you where they think they, you can play and do so in an honest way and then help you um you know teach you how to contact those schools make sure you're taught contacting the right schools and then um you know those those things are valuable so creating a target list with you um you know people talk about connections you know connections for me, like you have to have ability and stuff. Like if you came to me, right, and you're a really good player, can I connect you with most schools? Yes, I could call most schools right now and connect you with them. Um, that doesn't, but you have to be good enough. So the connections thing sometimes is is overrated. Uh, what I see, um, I think there are some good recruiting services out there and people that do a good job. I see a lot of people that don't do a good job. Uh, the things that I think that I see don't do a good job are one, just like services that just say like, oh, we're going to blast your information to a bunch of colleges. Like you can do that yourself, right? You need like individual attention, which again, you need someone to be able to evaluate you and help tell you where they think you fit academically and athletically. Academically is easier, but you, really athletically. Um, and you have to have someone that's honest with you. That's a huge one because what I see is a lot of recruiting services are not honest or they're just not good at what they do. Because sometimes people say like, oh, my recruiting guy said I should be able to play at South Carolina. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, no, no, you have no chance in hell to play at, North, at South Carolina. Um, so again, I don't know if the recruiting services are, you know, just, they just tell the players what they want to hear, or they just have no idea how college baseball works. So, yeah, I would just be careful too. There's a lot of recruiting services out there. And I, I think a lot of them, just like there's a lot of showcases now and a lot of tournaments, a lot of, there's a lot of everything. So there is a lot of, there's a lot of crap out there. You just gotta do your due diligence. Do your research, talk to people. Sorry guys, uh, I'm getting a lot of questions. I can't keep up with them. Can everyone give the video a uh, like? That would be awesome if you could. Tips on kids taking I have no idea what that is. 
<laughs> Sorry. When you play on a turf infield, do you change where you start? Your slides avoid sliding by the base. Yeah, I mean, I always take into consideration the the surface and um, you know how you're going to slide on it, especially in rain. We talk a lot about um, if it's rainy on a turf field. I, without a doubt, tell the players we've got to slide early. First time little league manager, kid pitch advice for effective practice. Uh, my biggest advice for effective practices, oh, that ball smoked right there, is um, depending on how much help you can get, how many other coaches you can get. I'm a huge fan of just like small, small groups, no, as little standing around and idle feet as possible. Like get people moving, um, get them as many reps as possible, get them to do the things they're gonna do in the game most. You know, don't waste, don't waste your time. A huge issue I see with practices is coaches wasting time on things that barely ever happen in the game. Like think about like the meat and potatoes of like what's going to happen in the game. That's your practice. And then you can sprinkle in like other stuff, but um, that's how, that's how I would, that's how I would do it. And real quick, we typically go at a typical practice, we go individual defense. So small groups, you go to your position, you work on a skill that day defensively. Then team defense for high school, that could be situational defense, right? Where we just got hitters hitting and defense is just playing the situation. Um, it could be at certain levels working on, you know, uh, you know, first and third defense and bunty and all that stuff. I don't do that actually that much. Um, then we'll go individual offense where you're working on, again, batting cage, you're working on drills, stuff like that. And then team offense where maybe you're hitting on the field, maybe you're again doing situation stuff, but now you're doing it from the off, excuse me, the offense perspective. So you're getting in your swings, but you're also working on your base running, you're teaching technique, you're teaching, you know, the mental part of the game and all that stuff. So that's kind of how we break down our practices. Do you think you can make the big leagues, if you have amazing, if you're a really good hitter, apparently, but uh, not, don't have speed or defense. Well, you, the more you can do one thing, like if you can't play defense, you have to rake, like absolutely rake, rake, rake. You know, if you can't hit, you better be the greatest defender ever. So like, it's, it's like a, it's like a scale. The, the worse your defense is, the better your hitting has got to be. Um, Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, should 11 or 12 back shortstops go into the backhand plant throw or jump throw? It depends how much time you have. Um, you know, if you have to set your feet and get moment and, you know, set your feet, plant and throw, then I do that. Sometimes you don't have time and you just gotta, just gotta do a jump throw. What would I do if I caught pools to 700 ball? That's a great question. I'm not really I would bring it to pool holes and give it to him, and I, I wouldn't do that. I would give it to the guy. Uh, have I seen the Bojacks facility? I've seen it online. That's all I know about it. It looks cool, but that's all I know. Wow, I'm behind on questions, everyone. Let me try to speed up. Are the skills little small ball pitching machines any good? Um, I don't know that exact pitching machine, but I would just make sure for the young kids the difficulty isn't too high. Sometimes people try to make the drill super hard and it leads to a lot of um, failure and then the young kids get really upset and they don't want to play anymore. So I try to give the young kids a lot of success. You want them to enjoy the game. Obviously, you, gotta, you can challenge them at times, but... I want to make sure that it's not too challenging. How fast is fast in baseball? Uh, it depends on your position, but in baseball times are typically, well, you can do home the first times, but also 60 yard dash times are big in baseball. So like I ran a six, six and I was considered pretty fast. Uh, I've ran against guys and seen guys that run six, three, and that's like flying. 
I would say if you run a 6.5 or below, like you are absolutely hauling ass. How bad did you hurt your hand when you got jammed? Um, I mean, I've hurt my hand getting jammed, but it, I mean, it hurt for a second. The expo is really coming back. I'm not sure. Uh, I have been in the baseball. Do I think Otani should stay for career longevity? No, I think he's awesome at both, so you might as well do both. All right, everyone, I'm going to, um, I don't know how I'm going to do this. My back is killing me. So I'm going to see if I can, I don't, know if I, I don't know if I can do this, but I'm going to sit back for a minute because my back hurts a lot. So we're going to try this for a minute. I have been to Montreal, yep. And I have a lot of, I just drank a smoothie and have berries all over my lips. So sorry about that. All right, everyone. Hey, we got to 100 likes or 100 thumbs up, likes, whatever you want to call them. Thank you, everyone. If you have not liked the video yet, please do so. What's the focus of your winter workouts month by month? Uh, it really depends. Like, you, usually, like, we start winter workouts in December. A lot of those workouts are to kind of two things. One, get, like, a baseline for our players. And then, two, introduce them to, you know, how we want them to swing the bat type of approach we want, uh, how we want them to feel the ground ball, feel the fly ball, how we want them to throw, right? So it's like teaching the fundamentals and how we want to do everything. And then also teaching like our organizational philosophy on like, this is how we practice. This is how, you know, this is how we pick up the balls after we hit. This is how we rotate through stations. This is, you know, all those things I think the first month and then from there it just um it depends a little bit on the age group but we we'll slowly build our way from that to uh being ready and being prepared to play the game and it and typically that's April for us in our area uh, if I didn't play baseball what career would I be doing right now um I probably would have tried to do something in football or hockey. And then if none of those worked out, then I probably would have done something in finance, something along, something to do with investing, I would say. At what age do you start having your pitchers do arm care exercises? Uh, we have everyone in our program do arm care exercises, so our youngest players are 10 years old. How important is it to be as strong as possible and what drills should I be doing? Um, yeah, strength is a strength, being strong, being explosive, being fast. Those are all really important. Um, so I definitely think you should be working on those. Um, I don't know how old you are, but um, I think that you definitely should be um, being being as strong as possible is important. You also want to be able to be you know flexible and mobile, and that's important too. Um, what stocks am I holding right now? Um, my biggest stock. So I've been very much. Uh, so a lot of people talk about divers diversification, which I think can be important. Um, I took the a uh, little bit different approach. I guess I diversified when I first got into the stock market back in 2007 was the first time I bought stocks. But then I very quickly stopped diversifying and picked what I thought was going to be the biggest winner, which I decided in 2007 was going to be Apple. So I invested... Uh, a lot of money in Apple in 2008, I invested a lot of my paychecks in Apple and I invested in Apple in 09 and 10 and 11 and I just kept buying Apple. And then I was told by a lot of financial advisors that I had way too much Apple and that I was going to lose all my money. And, uh, 
and now 10 years later or well 2007 15 years later apple is now yeah, at one point it was almost a three trillion dollar company and uh and then I did the same thing three years ago. I decided that Tesla was going to be the next big stock. So when they were a $30 billion company, I sold for the first time some Apple and put it into Tesla and started buying Tesla as much as I could. And that was at like $30 billion. Then I bought more at like when it was like a $50 billion market cap and that made it all the way to basically a trillion dollars. And I have not sold a, a share of Tesla now. And uh, a lot of people say Tesla is in a bubble. And um, I'll tell, I'm not, this is not financial advice. Do not take my financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. But I will say that um, I invested in Tesla for the same reasons I invested in Apple and I will not sell my Tesla stock until Tesla's worth a couple of trillion dollars. That might sound crazy, but I, th I actually do think Tesla will be worth a couple of trillion. And people said I was stupid with my Apple stock, but that's my thoughts on, on that. And I also own a lot of other stocks as well, but like far Apple's my biggest holding Tesla's my second biggest. And then Third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth, thirteenth, fourteenth, fifteenth. They're like way below that. But I've owned those since like two thousand seven when I got in the market. Um. Yeah, I do think actually people will start going to the bigger bases now that the minor leagues have done. Oh, judges back up. Minor leagues did it. Major leagues is going to do it. I would anticipate that will that trend will continue. Okay, so we're taking a mound visit here. Taking a mount. I haven't been watching the last. I've I've kind of stopped watching the games. Hey, very cool. Glad that the hitting drills worked. Um, how long, what do we have? Do we have runners at second and third? I don't know what the situation is. Just went the commercial. Um, how long should you be doing drills every day? So there's no specific time that you should be doing, um, drills. I, I think that depending on what the drill is and what you're trying to do, like some days I go and hit, not anymore, but I did, I'd go and I'd hit and do drills for, 20 minutes and be like, I feel awesome. I'm good for the day. And some days I do it for an hour because I didn't feel awesome. So it really depends. Depends how much, um, you know, if you need big time changes, like big swing changes, you're going to have to do a lot more, put a lot more time into it. You know, sometimes if it's just like swing maintenance, right, you feel great and you just want to keep that feeling going, it might be a lot shorter uh, day of work. How to help kids eight to 10 throw further with more accuracy. Uh, the biggest thing, number one, is just throw. Uh, have like good focus and intent when you're throwing. Throw to targets. Like a lot of young kids I notice, just, they just throw the ball and they don't care where the crap it's going. Like throwing it to a target, you know, with good intent. I think those are like the easiest ways. But now, um, there's a lot of like things you can clean up as far as like how they use their body and their arm action and stuff like that. That's probably tough to talk about on here, but the easy ones are those first two I talked about. How do I get my crush to come to my game? Um, I'd say you just have to be awesome, hit a bunch of home runs, um, maybe throw them up on social media and then Hopefully your crush comes. How to reduce a swing being so steep. Um, when you say steep, some people say steep as in like downhill too much and some people call steep uphill too much. So which one do you mean? Do I prior prioritize my own players when scheduling private lessons? Yes, typically I'll try to get 
as many of our own players uh, in first, yes. Do 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 do. Uh, am I a fan of indie ball? Uh, I haven't really. I don't know if I've ever seen an indie ball game before. Walking judge to get the Rizzo. Yep. Uh, did you ever try switch hitting? I did mess around with it when I was like 14 and a little bit in college, but it was like very, very just messing around with it. At what age will I get Maddie into travel ball? Probably next year. If he's good enough next year to play for our team, probably let him. He's still pretty young. He just turned eight uh, a couple days ago. So... Yeah, let's go, Riley. Do you unbounded right? Any tips to help catch? Yeah, I have a lot of videos out on helping catchers. Um, you know, biggest thing I think for catchers is working on receiving, doing doing what you do most in the game. You receive most, followed by blocking, followed by throwing. So practice it in that order. Steep as the knob is going down into the zone. So a lot of times when people are steep to the ball, for me, that's because they're they're getting forward. So they're not getting back. They're not turning the barrel and their upper body back behind their back leg enough. So it's hard, you know, for them. If your body gets going forward or if you push your hands and knob forward, it you don't have enough time or ability to be able to turn the barrel up into the ball. So... There's a ground ball to first. Hello, Spencer Foods Reviews. All right, everyone, I'm gonna answer a couple more questions and then I think I'm gonna uh I think I'm gonna go get ready for bed. I'm like been exhausted lately. I don't know why. Uh, tips for faster bat speed and being on plane. I would go and watch, um, go to our hitting playlist. I have a ton of videos on both of those subjects. Probably easier to watch those videos than for me to talk about it right now. Do I like the new schedule format for next season? I actually don't even know what it is. Where was I? I saw someone's question. Um, sorry, there's a lot of questions on here, so I don't know if it goes fast on your guys' screen, but for me, I can't get to everyone's questions because they're just flying. Can you help me advise my son on pro ball expectations? Um, uh, let me go back and see. I don't know how old your son is. Did you say that in any earlier comments? Oh, here's one. How would you advise me in talking to my son who hopes for probable, but I know he would not go and is really good at school. Um, yeah, it depend I don't know how old he is. Um, I mean, the biggest thing for me is like, school's important. I always valued when I was younger, sports and school. And I think there's plenty of time to do both of those. So I think when people are like, if you want to do good in school, then you can't do anything else. I don't think that's true. Um, I think if people are like, if you want to be good in sports, you can only do sports. You can't do good at school. I don't think that's true. Um, there, you do have to, there's only a, so many things you can focus on, right? So like, if you want to be good in school and you want to be good in sports, then you probably can't like, think you're going to go out every night and, you know, uh, go out and like hang out or not just hang out. You can hang out for it. But like, for instance, in college, like they used to tell us you can, you can do two, or th you can typically do two. Um, there's three things you can do and you can only do two of them well. So you either got to do school well and baseball well. Um, if you want to go out like on the social scene, like go party and like, like a college kid, 
you know, you can go do that, but you're, one of those other two things are going to suffer. So either your school's going to stink or your, your baseball is going to stink. Um, so like, I always felt like you could do well in school and well in baseball. I think there's enough time to be able to do that. So I would just make sure that you explain to them that it's fine to think that you want to play pro ball. The chances are not high, but it doesn't mean you can't, if that's what you want to do, like I would encourage them to shoot, to do what they want to do, but also understand that that doesn't mean that you just give a hundred percent to baseball and you don't focus on school or, um, you know, just give up on school. That would be my answer to them. You know, and then if you feel like, like with my son, if Maddie, if my son was like, oh, I want to play in the major leagues, I'd be like, that's awesome, cool. You have to work really, really hard. Um, but if his, if his schoolwork, if he was a high school player, right, and he was wanting to get drafted out of high school and his, his grades stunk, like, um, I wouldn't just, I would pretty much say, if you want to go practice, then we ain't going to practice until you get your schoolwork done. I wouldn't just let him stink at school and say, well, it's okay because he's going to play in the major leagues, like, because the chance of that happening are too low. And to be, and for most people, 99.999% of people, um, like doing well in school. And I know people say college is overrated, especially now. Um, and with the price of colleges and all that stuff. But like most people are going to probably end up doing something other than baseball. Were you ever involved in a no hitter? Um, I don't, I was involved, I was close in a no hitter. Uh, Chris Young had a no hitter against Milwaukee that I was involved in, but it got broken up. Does my son constantly ask you which player is better, for example, Mickey Mantle or Hank Aaron? Um, he does ask me a lot about players, you know, who is better. Um, I don't know if it was Hank Aaron or Mickey Mantle, but like, yeah, he will ask a lot, you know, and I'll ask for like tough ones. Lately, it's been mostly football ones because football season just started up. So he's, now he's in the football. Usually he just thinks he knows who's better. Like, and I'll just throw stuff out there. Like we were watching football and, we talked about like Tyree kill or something. And then he'll be like, yeah, well like, Oh, I, I was complaining that we didn't have uh, enough firepower and offense. And I was complaining we need a number one wide receiver. And he said, yeah, like we need Randy Moss, someone like Randy Moss, the best wide receiver of all time. And I'm like, well, he was, he was one of the best wide receivers. I'm like, he's my favorite player. I'm like, Jerry Rice was really good too. And, and then, he'll be like, no, really? and then he'll start going off on that ball was an absolute rocket by Vlad. And that's the game. That ball was rocketed. Uh, all right. Last couple questions here. Now this game is over. Nor'easter's a competitive team. Yeah, we've played some good Nor'easter's team. You see that the certified hitting guru, Jeff Fry, talking about you. <laughs> yeah, I really, I don't really care what Jeff Fry says about me. Um, people get all like fired up about that. I'm like, I always think anyone that, anyone that has to waste their time trying to bash other people, like, I don't know. I, I don't try to bash anybody. I try to teach what I teach and try to help people and help kids. And that's it. I don't try to tear other people down. So what do they say when you're trying to build buildings? You got, I mean, I guess there's two ways to do it. You either build the biggest building and you try to tear everyone else's building down. He seems to like to try to tear everyone else's building down. I prefer to try to just build my own building. That's it. So I really don't care about other people. Um, that's not right. I do care about other people, but I don't care about like commenting on other people or at least not saying negative things. All right. I'll answer one more question. 
Should you sit off, should you sit fastball or off speed? I think most people should sit fastball. Uh, um, you know, that depends on the level that you're at. The major leagues actually now, like they're throwing more off speed than fastballs. Um, but so at a higher level, you can sit on the pitch that you think you're going to get. But I think at most levels of baseball, you want to sit on the fastball because, you know, especially even college, but definitely below college, um, you're going to get mostly fastballs, right? Like pitchers don't have as good a command. They don't have as good a break and stuff. They're going to have to throw fastballs. So, um, so yeah, I would sit, I would sit fastball. And when I get the two strikes, I typically still sit fastball. I just change my focus to like more of like an opposite field, like gap approach where I'm going to drive the fastball, the opposite field gap, and I'll be able to pull up the off-speed pitch. Your first Florida storm. Yeah. Anyone in Florida, um, hopefully the, uh, the hurricane isn't too bad. I was supposed to be going to Florida in a few days, but unfortunately we're not going anymore because of this hurricane. It's going to be hitting the area we were supposed to be flying in on they'll flying into during our flight there. So um, I'm assuming the airports are going to shut down. Those flights are going to be canceled and, and we're not getting down there, unfortunately for the tournament. But um, anyways, thanks for hanging out, everybody. I just realized it's pretty late. It's not that late, but I'm old and uh, I'm going to head to bed. Tomorrow's uh, my son's birthday party. So um I'll be doing that. And that's all I got. Good luck again, everyone in Florida. Stay safe. And uh, we'll do another one of these at some point in the future. Thanks for hanging out.